Thank you, Steve and uh, Tracy. We have Shy Girl with us, everybody. I've just made you the presenter. Thank you for your patience and for your time for coming here today to address our community. Waiting to hear your voice. Not sure if you brought any charts to share with us. I, I don't know what screen you have on mine up. <laughs> I have, I have, uh, I have the crew, I have the crew chart up with all your different uh, support air areas and a blue channel, and then on the right hand side, it looks more this compressed. One? I don't know. Where's the screen so I can see what you even have up? I have no idea what you have okay. up. Okay. <sighs> it's what? Uh, uh, it's a couple of crew charts. So if you're in the room, I see you moving your cursor around. So that's this what one? we're looking at. Yeah, you're on that this one now. Where it uh, says sound check? <laughs> huh? Where you're using clouds, it looks like bands on one on the right hand side. And the other one has channel lines and oh, many different okay. that's levels. Not actually, that's actually not a good one. <laughs> that's actually not. Uh, what I would be watching. Uh, okay. So that's my screen one. So. So can you see your screen now? No, but it's not. Okay. Can you see right, that one? It's just yeah. gray. It's, it's just gray, right? Okay, yeah. And on the right-hand side, looks like it has some kind of volume indicator on the bottom. ECB yeah. Delta VO5. <laughs> you know, uh, we know you're a crude trader, Trace, and uh, I know you follow other markets as well. And there's plenty to talk about with what's happening in the energy complex. But, you know, I'd like to bring up something I think that is pretty important, something that uh, you and I, uh, I had an experience with you over the last 24 hours. You know, a lot of the guys here in the industry, and you know, I've been in it forever, and we all think it's such a tough business to be into, especially if you hold yourself out to the public and you have clients or you have subscribers. And, you know, I didn't even think about it uh, till yesterday, how much more you have to go through as a woman, as a girl, as a female in this industry, that all that stuff that happened at like Fox News and everywhere else in the workplace is something to overcome. And I know there are a lot of great, talented uh, female traders. Uh, you're one, Nicola Duke is one, um, uh, Lydia Item Finkley, uh, so many that I, uh, Raggy Horner, Kathy Line, there's so many great female traders. What do you have to go through in addition to just uh, the stress of living off the market, being a woman in this business? <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I, I've never, you're always going to come across, um, you know, sort of the bad, the bad egg so to speak on Twitter and things like that. So, you know, yeah. I, I mean, my best thing, you know, I can say it's pretty much, you, you know, ignore or block. But, um, you know, I came from the CBOT and I worked on the CBOT floor. So right. it's pretty much nothing that I haven't, you know, seen. Yeah, it was, it was probably bad down there. It, so, was bad down, it was bad down there too, wasn't it? Yeah, so I mean, you know, there's nothing you kind of build up a thick skin when you work on the floor like that. So, um, you know, I just don't, you know, but the thing is that it's different than, say, working on the floor. You're working with these people every day. So you kind of know their personalities and know that they're joking or, or whatnot. Um, but, you know, when you come across people on Twitter, you know, you don't know all these people. So, okay. Well, that's one element. I, I, I would also bet. That when you are on the floor and you're trying, you're learning to read the markets with whatever you were doing on the floor, holding a deck for a guy, uh, doing charts for a guy. I bet it was also difficult for to get people to acknowledge uh, and take your work seriously for a while. Was that also an issue? Yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely. You know, at the, I mean, you definitely have to prove yourself, but I think that. Uh, even True, more so than a guy, even more so than yeah. the doors open so much faster for a guy, they're going to be taking them more seriously. And all the stereotypes uh, are really difficult for a woman in uh, a man's game. 
you know, and it's oh, really, yeah. I, it's not a man's game. It's a trader's game. No, but like when I first started in the industry, I mean, I literally had to like go knocking on doors begging for a job because I just wanted to get into the industry. So, you know, I finally found like a total boiler room, you know, yeah. hocking yeah. up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would hire anybody off the street. And I basically had to beg for the job. But, you know, that was years wow. ago. But still, you know. Yeah. But yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. I know. I hated those days then, but now I look back on them fondly. But, um, right? <laughs> yeah, well, how, how many cold calls did you make a day after they hired oh, you? Good Lord. Like huh? four, what? We had to do. We had to do like four or five hundred a day. Oh my God! I'd have my yeah. head would explode. I'd I'd have a stroke now. I could never so, do that again. Ever. Yeah. Thank God I was young. <laughs> okay, so let let's get to your bailiwick, and it's crude. And you know, I've been following some of your tweets, and uh, you've been uh, constructive on this market. Uh, you know, a lot of people were looking for a revisit of you know the lows that we had at the end of or beginning of 2016, or at least a right shoulder on a weekly chart. So uh, tell us what your charts are telling you about crude. We're getting a nice pop I with mean, all the war drums beating. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, let's see. Right now, I mean, you know what I would advise right now, right now you can see we're just in this chop zone. So, I mean, the, the, the chart is constructively bullish, right? Yes. We know that. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, we're kind of in this chop zone. So, you know, what I had posted yesterday, you know, if you are currently not in a position or if you're a day trader as opposed to a swing trader, you know, what I would wait is for, you know, a market uh, breakout. Yeah, I saw, I, I saw you know, that tweet. You know, you want to wait till the market break, breaks out, retouches, and goes, or if it, you know, if it collapses here. Now, you know, that would be my... You know, okay, because you said that traders get, traders get chopped up in these zones, and uh, what you were right. preaching is sometimes the right trade is no trade. Yeah, you. I mean, you can wait while it's in the chop zone. I mean, you, usually, you know, uh, newer traders kind of, you know, day traders, you know, should have been long, short, so, oh, my God, and they're chopped out, you know, a million times in here thinking it's going higher, it's going lower, it's going higher, it's going lower. So the best way to, you know, sort of treat this, as a, as a day trader is, you know, wait for the breakout retest and go um, either direction. Now, okay. overall, again, this chart is, you know, constructively bullish, um, and we do have uh, we do have repair areas up here above. Um, what kind of charts? Is this a point and figure? Or this, what, is a, what is this, is a, this is a TPO chart. So. Oh, okay. Um, Right now we have repair areas, so it's market profile. So we have some old repair areas up here um, in the 53 area. So, you know, if this market breaks out to the upside, then, you know, um, I would expect it to probably try and test this area. Um, okay. And then, you know, but we do have some a bit lower right here. So, you know, we could also have a false breakdown and then go back up. Okay, very so, you know, I, I, just I, like to feel, I just like to be aware of, you know, where these areas are. Um, right. And the blue lines are just um, and, and, and naked uh, POCs. So, um, They're what? But, yeah, naked POCs. So, POCs that okay. haven't been revisited. Okay. All right. So, uh, very interesting chart. You've been using this kind of chart for a while. You learned this um, yeah, while being on mean, the floor. Yeah, I mean, we use market profile all the time on the floor, but, you know, if you uh, want to learn it, Jay Dalton has some great books on it. Okay. Yeah, so there, so you brought, uh, opened my eyes, and I'm sure, you know, hundreds of eyes. Uh, I've never really experimented with these. I appreciate you doing that. So uh, you're a day trader and purely technical, Trace? Um, no, I will. I, actually, I have. Two separate accounts, so I, I swing trade and I um, intraday trade. Okay, uh, an another pearl. You know, some, some people try and do it all in one account. Why do you do it in two? Well, I do it in two because if I want to, you know, if I'm trading, if I'm in, say in a swing trade long, then I can't trade against myself. In other words, in the same account, unless I'm That's trading right. in different months, you know, right. I can trade. Right. 
I could be trading November and I could short December if I was long November. Got um, it. Or you can just have two separate accounts, and that way you can day trade against yourself while maintaining a screen position, either long or short. So there have been some uh, interesting fundamentals in the market. Um, you know, I've read articles like, if anything, there's a armed conflict with North Korea, crude would skyrocket. Um, I could understand if there was something happening in the Strait of Hormuz, but uh, can you explain to me why crude oil would go higher if there was a problem on the I mean, Korean Peninsula? Um, I mean, I don't think it, that necessarily North Korea would, um, you know, aside from the fact that there's war. In yeah, the, I didn't get it either. Terrible, I mean, but they're North importers. Produces, yeah, North Korea produces literally 9,000 barrels a day. Literally yeah, they need Chinese not, oil. I'm not, I'm not missing. Yeah, so, you know, they're uh, they're not a major player in, uh, in oil at all. You know, you know, oil traders would be looking for conflicts with China or something yeah, like so that where, you know, we have major imports, but North Korea is pretty much, you know, a non-threat as far yeah, as Yeah, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. So I thought maybe I was, uh, you know, just didn't understand why that would have an impact on oil prices. Now, um, do you find it interesting that the Saudis pulled their uh, public offering? I just found out about this when I was interviewing Adam Button. Uh, the uh, IPO for Saudi Aram Aramco has been pulled, and does that, can you glean anything from that? They just didn't think there'd be enough interest with $50 oil? I, um, well, I, I mean, first of all, I, I think they're uh, delaying it, quote unquote. Uh, but in, when I initially heard about it, I was very outspoken on the fact that I didn't think that it would ever happen for there's a myriad of reasons, all politically, why, you know, um, why I didn't think that it would happen, first and foremost, you know, why give up your nest egg, first of all, you know, why why make a public offering when you don't really need to? Second of all, you have to, so many family members are involved, they all have to agree to be audited, the whole company has to agree to be audited, and, um, you know, Saudi Arabia has been very protective of, you know, their reserves and yeah. um, their audits and things like that. So I couldn't really see them having some outside agency come in, you know. Yeah, like the SEC. Inter 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 intervene in, you know, all of their May, just, You think the you NFA, that, would, show, you think the NFA would show up on their doorstep? They they, <laughs> they have to me. <laughs> they have but, yeah, I mean, there's, there's another problem. You know, if you want a listing on NYSE, then you have to deal with the SEC. And I just don't. You know, I don't, I just never saw that being uh, something that would be of interest to them. So, um, oh, interesting. You know, quite, quite, you know I, frankly, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I always looked at IPOs or limited partnerships as if it's so great, why, why are you offering it to the public? Well, you know exactly. what I mean? And, you know, I mean, if, you know, and there's really no reason, they, there is no need for them to do so. I mean, it's not like they're, you know, hurting for money. Um, you know, if, you know, oil prices, you know, above $50, why? There, there is no need for them to do so. Right. So, but at 90, they might get interested if they think it's unsustainable, should that happen. And speaking about a possible, you know, I'm looking for 62. It's the top of the wedge that we had before we went to 25. Um, let me ask you this, uh, after our president's speech at the UN, looks like uh, uh, he's most likely uh, going to pull out of the Iranian nuclear deal and uh, Saudis are going to Israel to talk and you know they weren't always uh, historically best of friends, but the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, well, this market, exactly, right? Yeah, so I mean, this this market has no risk premium price in it, and um, I've actually interviewed some people that think there is going to be some kind of conflict uh, that would probably take a month or so to happen. That I would, don't know. And, yeah, next spring. Well, you don't think you know, so? Maybe next year. I don't know. I don't think. I don't even if I. I don't see the U.S. actually pulling out of the deal. And, or, you know, I don't think that's necessarily going to, uh, you know, 
entice or enforce other countries from pulling out of the deal. So don't think that, you know, as it is, you, there's not really, U.S. oil is not really doing business with Iran anyway. You know, you have okay. you know, deals with um, like Total and, you know, some of those other countries already have business deals going on. So I, I don't think it's going to pull Iranian oil off the market um, because there's too much okay. investment going on, even if the U.S. does pull out. But I mean, we're not, you know, we're not really doing a whole lot of business with them oil wise anyway. OK. OK. So from a practical standpoint, you don't see it uh, from a you know, political neocon perspective, it's possible, uh, in right. my opinion. So there, but yeah, there is I mean, no, there, there is no risk premium in this market right now, is there? Not, Zero. not, not for that. I mean, there's, you know, you've got, you know, anything Nigeria or Libya or, you know, oriented that's been going on for years. So, about, uh, you know, Venezuela. Something happens, Venezuela. that's already a price in. Venezuela, okay. it, you know, the, the problem with Venezuela is, their production is so is you know has been declining for several years. They've yeah. got this new thing, they priced it in yuan, but you know all in all that really doesn't matter because Venezuela is actually not really getting paid for most of their oil. They're paying their debt in oil. So right, you know, that's their currency. Not, and, and, so, and, uh, your, and your outlook for U.S. frackers uh, at these price levels? Do you continue to expect rig counts to expand or just hold steady. You know, you know, if we maintain the fifty dollar level, then you know, or higher, then I, you know, obviously, I'm, you know, shale is going to thrive. Okay. And, you know, there's All no, right. you know, there's no. They would have to, they would have to sustain. We would have to sustain lower oil prices, like low oil prices, for you know, for for months, really, you know. I think pull the kind of pull the steam out of that. Um, right, you know, yeah. even if even if we went down to forty really fast and came back up, that's not really going to alter um, shale okay. production that much. Let me ask you opinion. this. Let me ask you this. Going to our Bailey Wick, uh, does a dollar come into your consideration when you um, uh, you, you talk? I mean, uh, is a weaker dollar or a strong uh, more bullish for crude or? Uh, is crude demand because it's a petrol currency? Uh, could we have a strong dollar and strong crude? So I mean, you can, I mean, you can have a strong dollar and strong crude. We we've had that before. The correlation kind of goes in and out. Obviously, right. in general, a weaker dollar for all commodities is right. uh, more more bullish um, in general. But you know, the dollar the the dollar oil correlation has gone in and out, and I'll, I'll post a chart later. I posted the chart before. So it's not, you know, it's definitely not a one-to-one -one correlation. In fact, a lot of times uh, oil is more correlated to um, the euro than it is the dollar. How about Canada? And cash as well. Yeah, yeah. and that's broken okay, down. Yeah, that correlation. So, okay. So you do keep an eye on it, though. It kind of factors. I do it. keep an eye on currencies, absolutely, because they do affect it as well as like um, uh, NOK, Renoke. So as for Brent, you know, that's very correlated as well. Okay. So uh, do you have a business model? Uh, I know you have a Twitter handle. I don't think you have a website. Uh, are you mainly just trading for yourself or others? Yeah. And, uh, um, okay. I'm just. Just me. I don't. I'm not. I don't have any services or anything like that. I have a, a blog that I haven't kept up in months. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to read yesterday's newspaper, <laughs> if you want to read yesterday's newspaper, go to Tracy's blog. But I do. Exactly. I do. There's a lot of good old stuff on there. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I I don't remember from our prior interview. Does your handle at Shy Girl mean that you can't? You were born and raised in Chicago. No, actually, I just started my Twitter handle. Um, I, it was just because I was living in Chicago at the time. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. uh, do you miss so, it? So, and so I do. I do. I mean, I still have a lot of friends there. And yeah. Um, well, you know, the you trading know, floors are great. like like a ghost town now, Tracy. Well, yeah. I mean, they're pretty it's much gone. gone. I mean. They're 
only they only have one room open and yeah it's all it's options pretty sad so. I, I yeah I pretty much you know yeah, yeah. I, I think they're gonna <laughs> open a bowling alley there at the cdl right yeah. <laughs> yeah but you know i, I, I want to rent it out some yeah uh, we were we were there in the glory days. At least we lived that trade. So well, uh, right, it was fun. I mean, it was a lot. Of it fun. really was. It, it was like a ready-made social gambling environment. You can't top that Absolutely. combo. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you again for uh, coming to talk to me and our community today, Trace, and and everyone hearing my voice and Trace. You could follow her on Twitter at shy girl at c h i girl. And I wish you continued success. Thanks for showing us this market profile stuff. I'm going to look into it. And as always, yeah. my trading warrior sister, I hope pips rain down on you uh, for the duration, <laughs> for the duration of your trading career. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Good hunting. Good, good hunting <laughs> into the Fed. All right. Okay. Favorite car. Oh, someone wants to know what's your favorite car at the moment. My favorite car at the moment, um, I, the Jaguar E Type is uh, one of my favorites that okay. I have on my screen. So, uh, but I, I like them all. So I, I know. Them. Yeah, uh, one of my partners, Stelios, uh, said that you're a car fanatic. So I forgot to ask you that. So thank you, Natish. Now you know, and you're also <laughs> trading for. You also have some separate accounts for your cats, uh, with someone in the community is saying. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so you, you're building a <laughs> trust right. fund, building a trust fund for your cats. All right, Trace. Right. Have a great day. Good luck with the Fed, Tracy. Face, have a oh, great, yeah. have a great trading day into the Fed. Good hunting. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Face. Remember, we still have that. Uh, seasonal special going till October 2nd and just like trade so uh, there's a window of opportunity to execute it and there's also a window of opportunity they'll be closing October 2nd for the value and most of all my friends don't just count your pits count your blessings see everyone tomorrow for the aftermath adios thanks again trace <laughs>